Now, a few days ago, I put out a tweet asking FPL players to tell me what they've learned playing the game this season. And I thought that would make a good video idea during the international break. I've also chucked in a few ideas of my own, so stick around to find out what they are. Now, the first one then is from my friend Shaniel, who is Ted Not Kravitz on Twitter. He said, be patient and be rewarded, which led me on to a general point around patience in FPL, which I'm going to get into now. So the point is, right, I think one of the most underrated and underappreciated skills in the game is patience, right? Just having the ability to stick with a player that you know is a proven good FPL asset because you know down the line that they'll reward you. However, there is a contrary to that, and I've included a tweet from FPL Prem Tipster here as well. He's saying there was a point about Rashford at the beginning of the season, right? He had, and I think it was fair to say that Rashford was a sell early on, just based on what we were seeing from both Man United and him as a player, right? Yes, you can be patient, but there's also a time when it's probably best to cut your losses on a particular player. But the general point about patience, I think, still stands. And I think there are plenty of examples across the season where you know, patience has paid off. I think about Bukayo Saka for one. He went through middle of the season a bit of a dry spell where I think he went four or five games without a goal or an attack in return. And since then, he's become literally the best midfielder in the game, bar probably Salah and maybe Son. I'd also say around Anthony Gordon and Jared Bowen. There was a time this season where I had them both in my team. I can remember it quite well. And they were both flagged. Anthony Gordon, I think, left St. James's Park on crutches. There was a fair bit of news shared around on Twitter that he was going to be out for, for months. That all turned out to be fake. And Anthony Gordon appeared in the team the week after. And the same happened later on in the season. I think around game week 26 time when a lot of people bought Huang Hee Chan. Anthony Gordon left St. James's Park the weekend before on crutches. And then Eddie Howe named him in the starting lineup. And we all know that Anthony Gordon has been a really good asset this season. And I'm pretty sure... In some of the games where like he's hobbled off on crutches the week before, he's actually scored goals and got assists in those games. So he's one example of where patience has really paid off. And one of my biggest green arrows of the season was as a result of catching the Jared Bowen hat-trick of a few weeks ago. And I only had that because, well, I just thought Jared Bowen is just a proven Premier League goal scorer over multiple seasons. He's nailed on to start for West Ham. Lucas Pakatar was getting back in the team. And he plays 90 minutes every game. And I remember watching him just thinking, he gets chances every game I see him. There's no way, you know, I'm not going to pay attention to the complete recent like three or four weeks of him blanking. I'm going to still think he's a good FPO asset. And I knew he had a good fixture that week and I started him. So patience to hold on to a player that I knew was a good FPO asset was rewarded. And another point about goalkeepers as well, right? Andre Onana, the Man United keeper, I think was the most popular goalkeeper in the game at, right at the start. And a lot of players would have sold him on either on their first wildcard or in the first few game weeks where we could see that Man United were conceding a lot of goals. But actually, he's now one of the top scoring keepers in the game. And I'd suggest for the running of fixtures to the end of the season, with Man United looking a little bit better, he could be one of the best goalkeepers in the game right now. And it just says if you just stuck with him and held him throughout the game, you'd probably be doing all right with him and would have saved yourself a transfer. And one final point on patience. It's something I've been caught in the trap of doing multiple times in the past as well. But it's getting players out of your team that you're scared are going to go down in price or buying ones that you think are going to go up in price at the beginning of the week rather than valuing information. You know, across a game week, well, but gap between a game week, there could be cup games, Champions League games, etc., etc. Players could get injured in training. Players could appear to be injured the weekend before and then actually be fit to play the week after. And just making early transfers, I don't think is worth it, particularly when you're just trying to beat price changes. I think information and being patient around when you receive that information is really, really powerful. So yeah, all those points about patience, I mean, I think it's one of the biggest skills in FPL. Let me know what you think in the comments. One of the OG viewers of the channel now, FPL Boo Boo, he tweeted that FPL is 40% skill and 60% luck. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about this topic because, well, it's an interesting one. And I think differing there'll be differing opinions on the skill versus luck debate in FPL, right? And I, I just wanted to pose a few... I'll answer the questions myself, but 
I wanted to pose a few questions to you, maybe to answer yourself to, to understand it a bit better, but what does skill in FPL mean to you, right? What makes a skillful FPL player? For me, it's someone that's consistently finished in top, top positions over a number of seasons, you know, the likes of FPL Harry, Fabio Borges, players like that, and we'll get onto that in a second. But I also question how much of the game is actually luck. Now, I saw a great tweet in response to, uh, to Boo Boo here. But I would say that week on week, you're going to get luck. Good luck and bad luck, right? You can bring in players and they get injured. You could Players could come off your bench that have scored. You could bench players that have you know lots of points, etc. But over the course of a season, over 38 game weeks, I think it's, the, it's kind of the wonderful thing about the Premier League compared to cup competitions as well. It's obviously not based on the results of one-off games. It's Your rank is based on how you've played over 38 game weeks. And usually, usually over 38 game weeks, the luck kind of cancels itself out. Now, obviously, you could have a season where you get really, really lucky. I, I think to, to place, for example, number one in the game, you obviously have to be an exceptional player, but you must have a bit of luck going your way. You know, you need to catch a haul, maybe even a captaincy haul of a player that not many people have, etc., etc. But I think, you know, on the whole, over 38 game weeks, skill kind of prevails over luck and that's why i'd say in how i would judge an fpl expert is a player that consistently finishes either in probably in the top 50 top 10k over multiple seasons and what i thought would be worth looking at is the best fpl players in the world according to live fpl so these are managers over recent seasons that have consistently finished in absolutely fantastic ranks you can see there, according to Live FPL, if you haven't heard of him already, I think he's pretty quiet on social media. He doesn't have a, I don't even believe he has a Twitter account. Definitely doesn't have a YouTube channel. But Fabio Borges, who I believe is a, a Portuguese guy, he's the number one FPL manager of all time when you take all of his ranks into equation, right? So he has, look at that, three top 1,000 finishes. I mean, he's only finished outside the top 10K twice in his entire time playing FPL. And what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. So seven out of nine years, he's finished in the top 10K. That, I would suggest, is the level of a top, top FPL manager. Now, I'm not saying to copy everything Fabio Borges does, but you can't because he doesn't show his team before the deadline on Twitter or YouTube, etc. But you know, for me, this is what defines an FPL expert. Now, the next one is just around just how good the tools are out there on the internet now to help FPL managers. There are so many good ones. I don't think I've even captured all of them on this on this slide. So, you know, if there are any more, feel free to chuck them in the comments and, and help each other out. But particularly having a YouTube channel and needing to really look at stats, expected points, data, etc. to help feed my content, I've learned about just how good some of these tools are. And I picked my four favorite ones that I'd say I use the most. DraftHound, I use it for my expected points for the ultimate guide videos that I do. They're great for clean sheet odds and they're really good when you're on your wild card or your free hit because you can play around with the draft in the tool and obviously it doesn't impact your FPL team and you get a view of expected points with the players that you're picking. So I really like Draft Hound and you can find a link if you want to sign up yourself in the description below. FPL Review is great for helping you with transfer decisions. You input your FPL ID, it shows you your team and then it can tell you, well, if you do the transfer solver, hit a button called Transfer Solver it will tell you the most points profiting transfers you can make. And it's absolutely fantastic. I think genuinely that you could just give your team up to FPL review for a season. I'd be interested to see if anyone does this next season because I feel like the tool has gotten better and better as the season's gone on. Obviously, as it learns more about the data of players, etc. But also as the tool just gets cleverer in itself. I think next season, a fair few managers are just going to pick a team that FPL review tells them to do. And they'll probably finish in the top 10k. Like the tool is that good at predicting outcomes. It's just amazing. I can't believe how clever some of the technology around it has become. Yeah, FPL review is definitely up there. Live FPL, the website I've just showed you with a table of the top players in FPL history. It tells you your live rank. So similar to FPL review, you crack in your FPL ID and then day on day during a game week, it will tell you where in the world you are ranked quite a lot of time before the official FPL game does. It will also tell you the expected ownership of players, or effective ownership, sorry, not expected. It will tell you players around your rank, how well they're owned, players in the top 1K, how highly captained certain players are, etc., etc. It's really good to see how you stack up to the rest of the world. Now, I would say 
Right, I, I mean, this This is not an issue with live FPL. It's more of an issue of how you use it, right? I think you have to use it economically because during a game week, trying to, like, assess your rank when only, like, half of your team have played, it can't... It might not necessarily help you. You know, if you're doing badly, but you've only had two players play of your 11-men team, for example, and they all play on, on Sunday or Monday or whatever, looking at live FPL and seeing you've got a red arrow, it might deteriorate your mental health. But in reality... Once you get to the end of the game week, you might have had a sound game week. So just all just something to consider when using the Tory, I think. Then finally, FPL Team is completely free to use. And what it allows you to do, which some of the other tools don't, is you can look at future game weeks and the fixtures and plan what your team will look like in any game week for the rest of the season. I mean, personally, I find this really helpful because, yes, you can sort of plan alongside the fixtures, but having a tool where you can actually transfer in players compared to their fixtures, I think, is really useful. So for me, those are my top four tools. I just wanted to share them with you. FPL shenanigans next. He has said... Glass men will always be glass men. Of course, what it means by that is injury prone players. Now, just a little side shout. FPL Shenanigans is one of the best fantasy football players that I've ever come across. So if you don't already follow him, I definitely would because it's a fantastic account to follow. But his point around injured injury prone players always being injury prone is so true, right? Even if they're looking fit and back fresh, it doesn't mean they won't immediately get injured again. That's exactly what he said. My prime example of that I don't know if any of you guys bought into the hype of Reese James earlier on in the season when he returned from his first hamstring injury of the season or whatever. I bought him in. And he is just an example, right, of a player that I just don't think you can ever trust again in FPL. Bringing him in is pretty much guaranteeing a transfer out in a three or four game week's time. And another thing with injury-prone players is their managers know they're injury-prone, so they don't necessarily start every week. I think that's a point around Ben uh, Ben Chilwell as well for Chelsea. To be honest, both Chelsea fullbacks are far too injury prone for me to be picking them. I'm not necessarily saying fake injuries. I don't want to start a conspiracy theory. But when I um when I uh, think back to the Anthony Gordon and James Madison walking out of their stadium on crutches and playing the next week, Eddie Howe actually lying in press conferences about the fitness of some of these players. I'm not saying they fake their injuries or whatever, but yeah. Just be cognizant of managers that might actually lie about the fitness of their players. Eddie Howe has definitely done that this season, so just watch out for him. I didn't really have anything else to say on that, but yeah, just be conscious of injury-prone players. You, you just don't want to be picking them. And I think of Reese James as the prime example. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you've got any other suggestions. All right, next up is a suggestion from my good mate, Ben. He has said, basically, it's all about picking players based on your own decisions from the data that you have and not getting caught up in Twitter trends or social media or YouTube trends. And I think I think in FPL, it's really strong to think this way. You know, play the game your own way, but use the data and the tools that are available to you because ultimately, if everyone came to the same conclusions about players, you'd all have the same teams and it'd be really boring and there'd be nothing, nothing to split you from the rest of the player base, right? So yeah, I really like this idea. And I was just thinking of recent examples from when I think a bit of groupthink has come into play with the game. The free hit in game week 29, right? I'm not saying that it was a bad idea, but there are a lot of players that were probably not pushed, but convinced to do the free hit based on what they saw people on Twitter and YouTube doing when it might not necessarily have been the best thing to do for their team. You know, if they had seven or eight players, for example, and could have just limped through the game week on that, that was probably better than actually playing the free hit. It's all well and good to say those things in hindsight, but that was kind of an opinion that I had all along. I was a little bit worried about the amount of goals that would be scored. But I didn't think you needed to be filled out on defenders, but I think a fair few people might have got caught into the trap of playing the free hit just because they saw so many other players doing it. Another one, and I think given the chance to bring in Huang Hee Chan again, I'm not sure I would do it because... It locked me out of free hit. It meant I have to free hit in 29, right? If I bought someone like Douglas Luiz, for example, it meant that I would have had a playing player in game week 29. I mean, we can all remember game week 26 was a really big time to hop on Wang Hee Chan, right? And yeah, I, I don't think for me that was the best decision. And I think I was kind of coerced into doing it by the amount of tweets that I saw about him. And I just thought, oh, the guy's fantastic. But when you looked at his underlying numbers across the season as well, he was massively outperforming his expected goals data. And obviously got injured as well. So all of those scenes combined, I think I was caught up in a bit of a Twitter trend, Twitter trend around him. And finally, 
I just wanted to say about going differential for the sake of it. I'm not going to name any names or anything. People are entitled to play the game in however they like. But I definitely have seen players that pick FPL assets just for the sake of them being a bit different. And then obviously you get a bit of exposure on Twitter, right? When an uber differential that's in your team does really well. And I definitely think there's some players that do that, not for their own pleasure of playing the game, which obviously I have no issue with, but they do it for like engagement on social media and to be able to post it on Twitter. I just want to say, I don't think that's the best way to play the game. It's not my place to tell you how to do it, I guess. I mean, it's just my opinion at the end of the day, but you know, play the game for yourself, right? And if you think a player is differential and going to score more points and you go for it, but if you're just doing it for the sake of it, I mean, usually the template and the most popular players in the game are there for a reason because they're the best. So just going differential for the sake of it and being able to share it on social media, for example, probably not the best way to play it. And finally, we had to talk about it, didn't we? FPL on the 19th of March at 4 p.m. UK time tweeted that there's going to be something changing or something new coming to the game. And they've called it the Fantasy Challenge. They quickly deleted the tweet, but there was obviously time for many in the FPL community to screenshot it and capture it for the rest of time so we're hopefully getting a new game mode for fpl will it come this season will they do a dry run of it this season or will it just be next season i don't know and what do you think let me know in the comments what you think the new fantasy challenge game mode if it is a new game mode is gonna be i think it'll just be a weekly fantasy game where you basically get 100 million every week and get to pick a new team every week and there'll be prizes awarded to the number one ranked player etc i've got a feeling if they've tweeted it you know, this side of the end of the season, they might do a pilot run in game week 38. I think it makes sense for FPL to do this. Um, what what The main downfall for FPL, I think, in terms of their player base is players that get off to a bad start and then they just give up on the game after a few game weeks. So obviously, if you're a really avid player of FPL, it's a 38 game week long game and you've got to be pretty committed. And I would say the average FPL player probably isn't committed enough to stick to really going for their team for 38 whole game weeks. You know, most people that are watching this YouTube video, follow me on Twitter, regular FPL, Twitter, community members, etc. They're obviously a different story, but I'd say well, there's 9, 10 million players in the game at the moment. How many of those do you think actually pay really good attention to their team for 38 game weeks? I'd say probably less than half, right? So having a weekly game mode where you could probably skip a few weeks if you're busy, etc. Then just pick a team on weeks where you're interested. I think it's a really good idea from FPL to increase the retention of their player base so yeah that's what i think that's my theory behind it anyway but yeah let me know in the comments what you think the new game mode is going to be and if it's a good idea all right and that's the end of the video i hope you enjoyed that one i thought given it's the international break it's a good opportunity to take stock of where we are i put out that tweet because i wanted to help other managers basically become better at the that's the whole reason i've started this channel right is to help managers pick the best players become better at FPL and hopefully these general points about things that we've learned this season help you too. I have to apologize by the way I've got a big scratch here on my forehead. My girlfriend's puppy attacked me basically a couple of days ago. He got really excited when I went around and scratched me on the forehead so yeah, apologies you've had to look at that all video but I thought screw it I'm gonna go on camera anyway. So yeah if you enjoyed the video I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like. Let me know what you think of my opinions there in the comments. Give you plenty of things to talk about and think about I think hopefully I have anyway. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please subscribe to the Gold to Gold channel. It should be just here on your screen. And yeah, I will catch you in my next video. Thank you very much for watching.